Okay, this is the 9000 BTU climb air uh, split duct, or split system rather. Uh, pulls about a thousand watts when it's running. Sear 13 rated. Fairly noisy when it runs. And then uh, coming on around to the Sinville, you can see that it's very quiet when it's running. Uh, it's got inverter technology, CR19, uh, so the compressor and the fan run slower as it reaches the temperature that you've got it set for. And uh, it's a very efficient system. And it uh, pulls a thousand watts when it first starts up, and then as it runs, I've seen it run on as little as 200 watts during the day. Uh, once it gets the temperature about where it's supposed to be go inside the house here and uh, we'll take a look at the indoor units. First indoor unit that we're going to look at is for the climb air. Got it installed in the hallway. We bought it because it was the only system that was small enough to fit in this small space in the highway, or in the hallway I mean. Uh, set to 88 degrees and it's running at the moment. Everything here is solar powered. Uh, this is the indoor unit for the Sunville. You can see it's set to 74 degrees. It's heating the house at the moment. It's 9.20 a.m. That's important because you'll see the amount of electricity that we're using. This is the indicator for the water heater. The blue light on the right that's blinking shows that it's going to the water heater. It's electric water heater heating the water. Uh, the indicator on the left shows that the water heater's hot. This is the control panel for the inverter. We're pulling 65 amps. Voltage is right around 56 volts. It dips down to about 27 volts when the water heater goes out, corresponding with that blue light. Uh, the refrigerator is a standard Kenmore refrigerator, rated at 1.5 kilowatt hours per day. It has ice and water service in the door. Front loading washer and dryer, both all electric. You can see the uh, microwave convection oven. We have a regular commercial cook stove that's all electric. Everything in the house is completely electric. All of the uh, lighting systems are LED. Uh, we have a 32-inch uh, LED TV and a 22-inch LED TV in the bedroom. We run all of those just fine. Uh, you'll see as we walk by the Sinville, it wasn't making any noise at all. Now we get back over here to look at the water heater. You can hear that climb air running really well. This is a 50-gallon water heater. You see the uh, pump that we have installed. Circulates over through to the fireplace, also in the roof. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a moment. Up top here is the load diversion controls. Two solid-state relays that control the water heater. Uh, that's sent uh, from a signal from the charge controller and uh, turns these solid state relays on and off to heat the water as we're making enough electricity. All the piping that goes to various places to help heat the water, uh, some of that pipe winds up through the roof, uh, some of the pipe goes down through the floors. You can see the valve array that we have. We can turn valves on and off to direct the water flow the way we want it to go. Uh, the pipes that go down through the floor go across to the fireplace to a heating coil in the fireplace. Then we'll have a look at that a little bit later. Uh, where the uh, pop-off valve goes, we have a T there that runs as the return from the roof or the return from the fireplace, depending on where we're getting the water from. And then, of course, the noisy climb air again. And now we're going to take a look at the battery room where we keep the... Uh, charging equipment. <coughs> this is the battery bank at the bottom, the Magna Sign inverter. It's a 4400 watt inverter or 4.4 kilowatt inverter. Uh, runs off a 48 volt battery bank. The Schneider charge controller that also runs the uh, load diversion where we saw in the water heater. Circuit breaker on the left from the PV array. Circuit bre breaker below the charger. Uh, that's the main breaker panel to the house that uh, runs all the electricity to the house. Large gray breaker on the right is for the uh, battery main disconnect. 
Now we'll go outside and have a look at the solar arrays that we have. Let's first take a look at, uh, I've got a cable running along the ground there you can see on the bottom. Uh, that runs across over to the shed. I'm thinking about making a separate run to uh, uh, run another charge controller on this. I'll probably get another 20 amps of charge if I do that. Still debating on it. That's the conduit that the current wire comes through. And now going back over to the solar panels, you can see that we've got uh, two arrays of 12 panels. Uh, that goes to a, uh, a midnight solar, what's called a combiner box. Uh, you can see the leads running down the line or running down the pipe there. That combiner box there, the gray box, goes down to the ground that goes back over to the battery room. And the wiring just goes across. It's uh, used just regular cable ties to tie the leads down. Another midnight solar combiner box here for the arrays. Basically brings in all the wires into one place from the uh, uh, panels, combines them into uh, breakers, and then feeds it onto the battery room. Uh, swing around so you can take a look at these panels again. That's the uh, number one array of 12 panels and then we uh, have the uh, number two array also of 12 panels and they're both facing south and they're kind of uh, the inclination on it is kind of for spring and summer so it's not quite as efficient in fall or excuse me uh, uh, not quite as efficient in the s summer or the winter but uh, that way we don't have to worry about tilting them and having all kinds of stuff that can go wrong. Uh, let's go back and take a look at the batteries again here. Uh, move some of this stuff out of the way so we can get a little bit better look at it. So most of this stuff's just storage. These are uh, eight batteries, 400 amp hour, six volt AGM cells. I uh, haven't ever had any experience with those before. I've always used wet cells before, but so far they seem to hold up pretty good.